Hey there, so my name is Tala. Uh, I'm from Pakistan, so excited to be here and talk to all these amazing people, this uh, developer land. It's really great opportunity, really, really honored to be here and present some of the ideas that I found challenging, that I found interesting, and just present myself, talk a little bit about my background and, and uh, talk about uh, some of the exciting features uh, on Elasticsearch and GeoGIS. So now we can go to our slides. Awesome. So now we're going to talk about one of the most exciting features of Elasticsearch. This is both exciting and complex and, and really confusing at the same time because Elasticsearch by default has been a debate, a war between the developers. Some people want to use it as a DB, some want to use it as a um, full text search, some want to use that as a losing. So uh, a lot of variations on lots of search, but we'll go to them after a little bit about my background. So me, um, yeah, I'm, I'm working as a tech lead on the Hodel engine and I'm a talent on, on Intella and Doptel and I've been working in the Lighthouse.app. Before it was a startup, <clears throat> something like a subsidiary to Airbnb, uh, the real marketplace. So I was a founding member and in that in that experience, we it was a really great journey, uh, raising the whole startup tech ground, uh, the whole code base from ground up, uh, all the best practices and, and leading the team. A uh, little bit about my experience, why what dev so it all started as uh, it all started as a program called wave editor so i knew that i had something uh, i i had this problem solving skills when i was a kid i i look at these reverbs i look at these echoes how can these mic do these echoes how can these uh, program make these artificial echoes and in my mind even before I was a programmer I was thinking maybe you can raise a bar and you can put a little bit of delay and you can uh, lower the volume and you can keep on doing it until you get your outcome so to my surprise I was really surprised to see some of the softwares that I use was actually doing the same thing even before I was a programmer this was a pro problem solving that I thought in my mind and ever since that moment i knew i had a thing with computers and i can do programming and here we are after eight plus years ten plus years uh roaming around all the the javascript world uh, i've been working as a full stack on back end and front end and empowering local and international clients so where am i where am i i'm, I'm in pakistan uh, it's the, in, in a city called Faisalabad. It's the third largest city in the in the Pakistan. And and little facts about Pakistan is uh, that it's the largest export uh, on Asia about textile, and then the four largest in the textile manufacturing. And there are this is one of the snapshot of Faisalabad, the the one of the landmarks on the clock tower. The streets are super busy. You will see a lot of funds. This is from up on the drown, uh, and a lot of the phone lands, a lot of the private jets you can get, a lot of the coast town, the artificial ones, it's really, really fun. It's not really a desert, like people say. A lot of the business, a lot of the architectures, and yeah, definitely the fabrics. These are the main uh, proud of, of the city. The city pride itself for all of this import and export it does internationally. Now let's talk about uh, a little bit about Elasticsearch and a bit more zoom with the magnified glass. So what really is Elasticsearch? As per Wikipedia, the definition is there, but people can use it uh, in a different way. Why people use it in a different way is because uh, the documentation doesn't really restrict you and doesn't really provide you with language, uh, with the language specific libraries, like you want to do something in Java, then you don't really get that from the documentation, they just give you something in REST and you need to figure things out. That's how you end up with a lot of third-party packages instead of something official. And it gets really hard with a lot of choices, you end up doing a lot of trials and errors. So this is where I will be highlighting some of the key uh, best practices or must practices, I will call it. Uh, so if you will work in Elasticsearch, you will know exactly 
uh, where you should put a line, where you should, where you should draw a line. Okay, so first problem we see is Lucene problem. Lucene by default is the Apache program where the Elasticsearch was built on, but how is that a problem you ask is by this. So imagine you have a, a, a row, so in, in NoSQL databases like in Mongo, we call them docs, not rows. So this is a doc, practically it should be account one, but when you do account, uh, it should it will show you eight instead of one because there is something called Lucene docs and those are getting counted. This is how Elasticsearch works with their hot module indexing. So they will index all the ind uh, all your nested values and they will keep it cached or in memory or for the faster access. And, and instead of getting one, you will keep on getting more counts and all the counts from the, the nested. So this is one of the snapshot that I took from a working in DICE. So in DICE is like a table or like a database, but in, in uh, Elasticsearch, you call that as an in DICE. So properties and properties that are identical databases. But you, you will notice that in Lucene Docs, you are getting about 200. Uh, 88,000 something but behind the scene the indexes are really the same the only difference is in, in, at one side you don't re have a flat surface and the other side you have nested values so when I say flat first surface I mean Elasticsearch should be used as a compression not as a nested data so if you have historical data if you have let's say some visitor log maybe you want to have some kind of pricing that is changing every day and you want to show some kind of chart Elasticsearch should not really be used to store those kind of data it should be used to compress that data into meaningful information for example we we see on right side we have the minimum price 30 and and we we also have 50 we also have 90 but none of that really uh impact and and we can just compress it into one information and this is how you can solve those in problem next is a migration problem this should be the last thing that i will talk before moving on to geogis the, the functions we await so far so in a migration imagine that you have added few indexes and then you add a nested index and then you put a few more on it and you keep on adding it so what really happens, what people normally do, people likes to use NoSQL Freedom, they, they just put a value, they put an address and they put ABC or XYZ. What Elasticsearch will do, it will use something called dynamic mapping. It will take address and mark it as a text, mark it as a string, and there is no going back. So if in future you want to go to address as number, address as integer, this is where uh, the, the problem will rise because maybe at that point you are already at a million record and you can no longer do that. You will have to dump your DB, do the transformation and, and put it online again. This is really hard problem. There are a few workarounds, but those workarounds takes almost the same time, time like dumping and uploading again. So what you should really do, this is like a best practice, but more like a must practice that you should do is that you should just think ahead of what are the possible columns and what are the possible data types and should avoid uh, updating the existing field. This is how you can do mapping. Uh, you just put a properties and put something in, inside of the, the ID. Uh, I'm using something called like Docker ID. You can use anything like address and, and then use the type. You can get all list of types from the Elasticsearch docs and, and this will show, solve your migration problem. Now, the functions we are waiting for is geospatial. Some people call it GeoGIS, some call it Geosphere, but really what it is, it's a street data mixed with building data, mixed with vegetation data, and attached to some math coordinates. It will make up some, some map, the map that we know, the map we are using for our services like Lyft, like uber so they are all using the service uh, what we will demonstrate and what we will try is try to do something like a map boundary where we are 
we have some viewport, we have a visible screen, and we only want to uh, get the markers out of those visible screen and not anywhere else. Maybe there is a map around that area, but we don't want to uh, get any marker outside of that map bound. So this is what we are gonna try, and and this is what I'm gonna uh, implement. It's something that you do when you. Uh, this is some some crucial function, and uh, this is a really really exciting feature that Elasticsearch support. And I'm gonna show you how exactly this works and and why exactly we need to do it. The number one reason we need to do something like this is because our map can be overwhelming and there can be an overwhelming amount of data and we don't really want to render all the marker at once. We only want to show user the, the marker that he is seeing on the map. Maybe he is on Dallas, maybe he is on San Francisco. There is no point showing him markers that is not in front of his eyes. So let's go deep one more step that I added was uh, docker and why uh, how this can simplify things uh, and, and how a normal developer can avail this function we will come back here after we go deep dive in our code I will I will come back to this step so how uh, in Elasticsearch there is something called mapping that I just talked about and that mapping you can put uh, you use as a REST API. So what I made is just a simple script that is just using that APIs and, and uh, I'm providing it a file to, to do the mapping. I'm providing it a file to see if the, the entire already exists. If yes, then okay. If no, then you can create and, and put it on the mapping. After that, I did one more step that is a seed. So you can do any kind of data seed and maybe you you have you already have some thousand of data that you want to put before you go live before you go production it's really a hard decision it's really a hard uh, task to do because maybe you are a developer and you don't really have access to the root server you don't really have access to ssh and you are given access to a serverless so there is no way you can put this data online and maybe this is a requirement so this is where Docker comes in with this script, with, with uh, this running. So you can run this setup.sh without actually having the access by using Docker. You simply do a service and, and put on an image and this will install your service for you. And you can then uh, just uh, extract the port and make it visible for your program to interact with. Lastly, you can use a Docker file to run any kind of command or maybe expose any kind of ENV. One, uh, and, and this will solve all of your problem. Now, going back to the Docker, what it does is ES dependencies. Uh, before we had to do VMs, VM machine, maybe we wanted to run an EXE, maybe we want to run a DMG. So these two things are different OS dependency. We need Mac and Windows, maybe we need two different machines. So it, it is really hard to work on it, but in development, this is often something that we face. So Docker fixed that by not uh, downloading the whole bulky OS, but only the dependencies and setting it up for us with out of the box without us doing any extra effort so in here is for me it's a D es dependency where i need to install some of the es client uh, some of the node and npm and then i want to run this es mapping maybe i don't really have access to the server but i want to put this data live so i can just run put this sh script in the docker file and make it run for me and last thing is the deploying. So this is a really advanced topic that, that need a lot of time to talk. But in short, what we can use Docker for is uh, the CI, uh, the, the staging environment. So we can just change the ENV to staging ENVs or, or production ENVs. We don't really need to spawn a new server. We don't really need to spawn a new uh, EC2 instance we can just change the ENV and the same build will work portable anywhere else. Now to the implementation. So after we did the Elasticsearch, what we really did is, what we really need is the Southwest and Northeast coordinates, which is the map bound that you just saw on the, the slide. 
and this is how we will just send the, the box and then in our store we'll uh, we'll use something called a geo bonding box this is a uh, feature this is a keyword that we use for Elasticsearch API this is similar uh, to OPEQ or OPGTE uh, that Mongo use or that uh, the, the Postgres uses, or the SQLite uses. So they are using this geobotting map where you provide top right and the bottom left and it will draw a square for you and then you can just search whatever markers you want. And this is how you can transform your sources and, and return it again. Let's see this in action so right now this is my map that is loaded and it's have some of the markers so notice that I'm not yet leaving my mouse I'm just dragging it up and down so if I drag and let go it's gonna render one more marker if I go a little bit up so it's gonna render a few more markers so these are the markers that are my that is inside my visible viewport of my screen it should not render anything else other than these markers so this is exactly what it's trying to do and that is how you can implement the very awesome feature uh, which was the main initiative behind the very super mega apps like uber and and food panda uh, and and you can very much do it on your own so yeah that is pretty much it thank you so much and if there is any question to reach out